Hey what's up you guys, it's Connor and today I'm here to do another book haul. Thrift Books contacted me and asked me if I was interested in partnering with them for a video and I of course said yes because who doesn't want free books? An idea that I had was that I was gonna do my own version of like a supermarket sweep where I scoured through their site and tried to find as many books as I could get with the gift card that they provided me. So all of the books that I got from Thrift Books... <laughs> Nook! I got seven books and it was all for under $30. The total ended up being $28.33 because I couldn't buy another book with <laughs> that remaining little amount. But if you guys don't know, Thrift Books is an online bookstore where you can get a lot of cheaper books. They can ship worldwide, so most countries I believe, but they can't ship new books to other countries outside the US, but they can ship all of their used books, which is everything that I got. I shopped around on the used section. All the books that I purchased were either $3.99 or $4.19. So it was just a freaking field day and I was having a blast going through and trying to find the best deals in the books that I actually wanted. And you can also specify what condition that you want the books in. So it'll have acceptable, good, very good, like new, new. So I'll let you guys know what the condition was when I purchased it and how it came and everything like that. <laughs> first package, it seems like there are two in here. So not the best of starts, but the first book I got was Soulless by Gail Carriger. You can tell that there's this humongous, huge rip on it on the cover and it looks pretty beat up. So I'm gonna contact customer service and see what's going on with this because Good says that the cover is intact and this is not intact. <laughs> Future me will come back in to this video and say what happened with this book. But if you guys don't know, Solus follows a girl named Alexia Terabody and this is the first book in a urban fantasy series where there are different paranormal creatures. So vampires, werewolves, ghosts, stuff like that. And they're all considered to have more soul. And because she is soulless, when she touches one of those beings, they lose their supernatural ability. So if she touches a werewolf, then they lose their werewolf traits and stuff like that. She has an altercation with a vampire and then she has to solve what the heck was happening with that because the vampire ends up being killed. I'm gonna contact customer service and I'll be back to say what happened. So I ended up contacting customer service for thrift books because of this book right here and I sent them pictures and I described the condition that it was in and everything like that and the condition that they had said it was in and the person that responded to me did it so quickly it was within a couple of hours they looked on their website and they looked for a replacement but they unfortunately did not have one so they ended up refunding me the money so I can wait until they get this book in stock later and I'll reorder it when it does pop back up again. In the interim, I am going to end up donating this book or giving it away or whatever because I'm not really interested <laughs> in having such a damaged copy. The customer service was super quick getting back to me. They were super friendly, so I can attest to that, but this was unfortunate, but I will be getting the book eventually. Hi, pup. Nikki, you want something? <laughs> triggered. The next book that I got was Rave Master Volume 1 by Hiro Mashima. If you guys don't know, I'm a huge fan of the fairy tale manga series and the other popular series that Hiro Mashima has done is Rave Master. So I wanted to give it a go and see what it's like. This is a character that actually is in both Rave Master and Fairy Tales named Plu. If you want to check out what some of the artwork looks like, it looks like this and I'm excited to jump into this one. This one was also marked as good and it does appear to be in good condition. Next package, there seems to just be one book in here. I got The Steel Remains by Richard K. Morgan. This is the first book in a high fantasy series that follows a character named Gil. Gil is a washed up mercenary and he's estranged from his aristocratic family, but then his mother enlists his help to save his cousin who's been sold into slavery. And then he and a couple of other companions have to go and try to save his cousin. I looked up a list of fantasy books that featured main characters that were LGBT and this one popped up so I decided to pick it up and we'll see what I think when I get to it. This one was also listed as in good condition and I can confirm that it is in good condition. All three of those books were $3.99 books. And the last package has the last four items that I purchased from thrift books in it. So let's jump into it. Okay, sorry, my battery died. The next book I got was the written by Mike Carey and Peter Gross. This is subtitled Tommy Taylor and the Bogus Identity. This one follows this guy whose dad was a famous author, but his dad wrote about him a lot. And so people think that he is 
the actual character that his dad was writing about. And it turns out in this world that authors have some influence on reality, and the main character has to then fulfill some of the things that happen in his father's books to solve something that's been happening, I believe. Yes, that's close enough. And it is by Vertigo Comics, and this is what some of the artwork looks like. So a little bit of an older style, and a little bit more simple in the coloring and everything like that, but hopefully I will absolutely love this, and I'll let you guys know what I think when I get to it. That one was also one of the $3.99, and it was considered good as well. After that, I got The Schwa Was Here by Neil Shusterman. This is one of the only books by him that I have not read. It's one of his older novels as well. This one follows a boy named Anthony, and he discovers that someone that is in his school, I believe, is functionally invisible. People just forget about him and don't see him, but for some reason, Anthony does see him and does remember him. The two of them together make a lot of chaos and trouble, and it's all in an effort to make the schwa, who is the character that keeps getting forgotten, be seen. So I'm gonna jump into this one at some point soon and see how it is. This one was described as very good, which for an older novel, this is in very good condition because I have been having a hard time finding this novel, which is nice because Thrift Books has a lot of harder to find stuff. So I'm happy that I could get this and add it to my Neil Shusterman collection because I have like a whole shelf that's just all of Neil Shusterman's books. Another book I picked up from Thrift Books is Love, Anthony, which is by Lisa Genova. I read Inside the O'Briens a couple of years ago now, and that one follows this family after the father is diagnosed with Huntington's disease. It follows the father as he's coming to terms with this new death sentence, basically, as he starts to lose the function of his hands. He starts becoming a lot more clumsy. He starts having uncontrollable movements and everything like that, getting really skinny. It also follows his daughter, who is going through the process of deciding whether or not to be tested for Huntington's because you have a 50-50 chance of getting Huntington's if one of your parents has it. This one follows a mother who has recently lost her son, Anthony. Anthony ended up being diagnosed with autism before he died. His mother is now at a beach house, I believe, and is mourning her son and figuring out what comes next. She ends up meeting another woman who, who is mourning a death of her own. It was the death of her marriage. So the two women come together and are there for each other during hard times in their life. I am pumped for it. I am ready for it. So I'll let you guys know what I think when I read it. That one was described as like new and was $4.19. And the last book that I got from Thrift Books is City of Bones by Martha Wells. This is one of her standalone novels, I believe. This novel is about a post-apocalyptic community that has risen from the ashes of humanity. They live in the desert. It seems like there is some evil group that's trying to bring down this community, this society, and the main characters are trying to prevent that from happening. I've read Martha Wells' Books of Axura series, and I recently just read her novella, All Systems Red, and I've really enjoyed all of those. I wanted to keep going with my Martha Wells reads and read this one as well. City of Bones was also a very good book and was $3.99. So those are all the books that I got from Thrift Books. I'm also gonna throw in a couple of other books that I have recently got just because I don't wanna make a whole nother video for like three books. So those are coming right now, but thank you Thrift Books, this was awesome. Okay, so these are the books that I'm gonna just throw into the end of this book haul because I got them right after I posted the last book haul and I just need to put them somewhere. Simon & Schuster has been really on top of sending books out, so I have two packages from them. Oh, what does this say? I have the right to a memoir by Ch Chessie Pout? Prout on sale March 6, 2018, so that's already out. I feel like that's a bit of a spoiler. You have to tell me what was in the bag already. And there it is. I have the right to a high school survivor story of sexual assault, justice, and hope. This is written with Jen Abelson as well. So when she was a freshman, she was sexually assaulted by a senior at her school, and then she went forward and reported him to the police and testified at his hearing. She was met with unfathom unfathomable, ooh, that is a hard word to say, backlash, and then she stripped off her anonymity and she is helping young teens that have been sexually assaulted find their voice. I feel like it'll be really interesting to see what happened to her and then how she has now decided to be the strength that other people need. And it's crazy that she's like only 18, basically, right? The other thing from Simon & Schuster, there's a lot of tape on this. Ugh. 
Oh, it's a lot of confetti. Is there anything in here? So it's an exclusive sneak peek of Morgan Matson's Save the Date. It also came with a little wedding cookie that says Save the Date on it. Ta-da! This doesn't seem like my cup of tea, but if you guys were wondering, it comes out on June 5th, 2018. Thank you for the cookie, though. It's like one of those rom-com marriage wedding books, so check it out if you're into that kind of thing. So much confetti on the ground now. What do you do with confetti? Do you recycle it? What do you do with this? Do you recycle this plasticky stuff? I don't know. Are you allowed to? Will they deal with it if I do it anyway? And the last book is something that I pre-ordered, so I already know what it is. I pre-ordered Children of Blood and Bone. I heard her talk about this book at Y'all Fest last year in November, and ever since I've wanted to read it, and then I requested an arc of it, but I didn't get it. It's about this girl who lives in this fantasy world where there used to be magic, but now there isn't really. She finds out that she is able to do magic, I believe. She has a chance to bring back magic and strike against the monarchy. Her and a rogue princess team up to try to bring magic back and outwit the prince who does not want magic to come back. Basically, she was describing how much Avatar The Last Airbender influenced her writing and her story making and everything like that, but then she also used a lot of Nigerian mythology and stuff like that. So those two combined, I was like, yes, I want it. I want to read it. I've heard a couple of mixed things about it. I've heard people absolutely freaking rave about this book and love it. I've heard people be a little bit more critical of it. So I'm curious to see where I'll fall and I am so ready for this book. I've heard it's very action packed and fast paced, which is right up my alley. And also I just love that video of Tomi crying when she got the finished copy of her book. So yeah. <laughs> Very much excited for that. So those are all the books that are going to be in this book haul. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below what you have acquired recently. Have you read Children of Blood and Bone yet? Because that is a top priority for me. If you have any other Nigerian mythology influenced stories that you want to recommend, leave those down in the comments and I will talk to you guys next time.